Look at this ridiculous study. 50% of Americans would rather lose their vacation time than their data. What is going on here? Why don't you just pay the money to back it up in the first place? It's not that hard, right? Wait, come with me. These are the editing hard drives that I've collected over the years. There's quite a bit of them. Some of the footage is split across two drives because I ran out of space on one and then I was forced to put it on the other one. Don't tell me you have not done this. I know that you have. And then sometimes you don't back up the footage and you lose 24 terabytes worth. There are so many filmmakers who work like this and they're probably in that 50% of people who are freaking out about data loss, but it's okay. I have a solution and I call it the glass slipper method. This is completely made up. <laughs> I promise it'll make sense soon. Part one, dumping the footage. This all starts before you even begin filming. So you can actually go into your camera and set the name for the files that are gonna be made on this SD card. So for example, in this one, I labeled it glass. That way I know all the footage from this is going to be related to the glass slipper method that I'm talking about today. And that way, not all my files are labeled that C0001.mp4 or whatever, because once you get hundreds of those on your computer, it's gonna be really hard to be able to do data search and find your original footage. Now you're gonna organize on your computer and this file structure has to be neat and tidy so that you can easily find stuff. So you're gonna go in and you're gonna go by year, then say client and then project, day, and then you're gonna mark the card or maybe even the camera if you're using multiple cameras, then the card number, and then underneath it, sometimes I have proxies, but mostly it's just gonna be raw footage. Um, and then you can put proxies underneath and just make sure that all those match across the board. If you're doing traditional filmmaking and there was a slate, there should be a camera log and a shot list and just match that to the audio. Make sure that's labeled neat and tidy because you're gonna to wanna to do that in editing anyway. So just go ahead and pre-name everything that way. Okay, now you are handed the card and with great power comes great responsibility. Treat this like it's a fragile piece of glass. Right now you only have one copy and this is what's scary because where most people lose their footage is they format this card without making a backup. <laughs> That's just awful. So the first order of business is to make a backup right now. Time is of the essence. So we wanna use the fastest hard drive we can get our hands on and that would be a solid state drive. This is our glass slipper. Once you have two copies, we now have a left and a right shoe. And if one of these breaks, it's okay. We've got the other one. Part two, making the backup. You want two copies at any given point. So before we format this, we need to make sure we back up this. And in order to do that, we're not going to back it up to another solid state because now time is not as important as storage capacity. So we want the biggest hard drive we can possibly get. I recently made a 36 terabyte RAID in order to expand my capacity, but you can do something as simple as like this 10 terabyte. These are spinning disk hard drives, which means that you don't really need this to be um, as solid as this one. These you can throw in your backpack and you don't have to worry about it getting corrupted, but these are mostly gonna sit on your desk at home or in an office, so it's not required for this to be as tough. We just want as much capacity as possible. So here's how we're going to do this. Uh, we are not going to go from the solid state to the RAID. We are going to go from the SD card to the RAID because we want a copy of the original footage. What if this got corrupted on its way to the solid state? So do a direct one-to-one -one copy right here. And while this is copying, it's gonna take a little bit longer than the solid state. We're gonna go on this and we're gonna double check that all our footage is there and that nothing got corrupted. Double check this, this is currently your glass slipper. So make sure that this is okay. Once the raid is done, double check that also. And you wanna make sure that these two match. Don't be naming files on here differently than this one because if you ever have to sync it in post-production or use this drive to reference the files, you wanna make sure everything is named the exact same. Okay, now we have our three glass slippers. So it's technically okay to format the card. Not that I do that. I just leave the card alone until my next film shoot. So it kind of acts as the third backup, but I don't really count it. Basically, if somebody accidentally erases that card, it's totally fine. I've got my two backups right here. Part three, offsite backup. 
You've got your two copies and I bet you're feeling pretty good about it, but you are not out of the weeds yet because I'm willing to bet these are both sitting mm, probably within 20 feet of each other, right? Maybe on your desk and in your backpack or something. And that's dangerous. What if your house sets on fire? What if the office sprinklers go off? Then the point of making two glass slippers is moot. So it's time for an offsite backup, your final glass slipper. I make this as easy on myself as possible without having to think about it. I have my RAID go and make a cloud backup automatically to sync.com. The reason why I use sync instead of Dropbox, um, sync is unlimited, but it's half the cost of Dropbox. And I think it's actually faster and harder to hack. The other cool thing about it is when you have a cloud backup like that, you can work from anywhere in the world and you always have access to your footage. Now, if you can't afford the 30 bucks a month, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to clone this RAID right here, which actually might be more expensive. That doesn't really protect you from natural disasters unless you drive a couple cities over. So I would recommend the cloud. It's so much more convenient. And then just check that offsite backup no matter what, at least once a week. Just put it in your calendar. Every Friday, go double check it. Keep it secret, keep it safe. Part four, file organization. If you're gonna be an editor, a videographer, a filmmaker, there is no excuse for a messy workflow. You have to keep this organized. Not only is it gonna save you time, but if you're working with another client, it looks professional. And third, if you ever have to hand off the project to somebody else, it's so clean and tidy that they'll be able to know what's going on without having to ask you and be like, what is all this junk on the screen? So what you're going to do is everything from the file structure, you're just going to copy into Premiere. It should already be labeled, organized, neat and tidy. So it's just a one-to-one -one clone. Now, if you're doing traditional filmmaking, you're gonna to have to go in and if you have unsynced sound, you have to match the slate of the footage to the sound spike that you see in the audio files. Just go ahead and do that in bulk. The way I do it is I don't do it individually. I put everything into a nested sequence. So here's what my bin looks like. I've got at the very top, We've got the main sequence folder and underneath it, I have two sequence subfolders. One is nested sequences and one is assembly sequences. So in nested, what I'm doing is I'm pairing the audio and the video together and grouping those. Now, whatever I do to those, it'll just reflect on the main editing sequence. Now, if you're doing documentary or anything else like that, and you don't need to sync the sound. If it's already synced, you can still do this and put similar clips together. That way you can put things like color correction layers, audio, volume, things like that. And it's affected in the nested sequence so that when you go into your main sequence, things are just tidier, neater. You're not trying to go through and like figure out a thousand different effects and layers. You don't have to do like select all, copy, paste. It's just a single nested sequence that you can just do one single change and it automatically updates in the assembly sequence. The last bit of advice is to never work out of the same assembly sequence continuously. So every single time I do a major change, like the, for example, the first one is just trimming the fat and then I do like a nice fine cut and then I do draft one, draft two, draft three. These are all going to be separate sequences. Why? Because you're always going to have that one client that's like, hey, this latest version is pretty good, but can we go back to the old one? I really like the second half of the old one, but the first half of the new one. And if you worked out of the same sequence, that's gone unless you go back and find an old autosave, but that's really clumsy. So every time you make a big change, just clone it and make a new version. That way you've almost got a timestamp, almost like a, uh, like the time machine of Adobe Premiere or Resolve. And you have this history record of each change that you've made. So you can always go back and say, Hey, you know, in the very beginning, I actually liked that original opening. I'm going to use that one and add it to my new sequence. So if you haven't got the theme by now, it's make clones of everything. Make a glass slipper of your final assembly cut. Glass slipper everything. Glass slipper everything. Part five, data recovery. Ooh, more than once I have lost data. Once because the TSA agent at an airport dropped my hard drive and ruined it. But you're always gonna have that instance where something is going to happen. Um, at my old job just recently, we lost 24 terabytes of footage. One drive overrode the RAID drive and erased and corrupted everything. Why does this happen? 
It's because things like Google Drive and OneDrive are not meant to be true backups. They're meant to just kind of be like a file sending system, but I would not rely on those to make a true backup of your RAID. It's not meant for that purpose. You have to use Sync, you have to use Dropbox, you use a proper cloud service to do that. Don't rely on cheaper, more affordable services that are baked into a bigger ecosystem like Microsoft and Google. Just don't do it, don't do it, trust me. So how do you even save 24 terabytes of footage? And the answer is, a lot of money, money that you could have just bought a backup raid or a cloud service to begin with. The total cost of retrieving 24 terabytes was $3,500 in addition to a $500 diagnosis fee. And the hard drives that you previously used are now fully corrupted. So you have to throw them out. And in order to store your new footage, you have to build a brand new raid. And that grand total is just, mm, it's just so cringe. You know what would have been cheaper? is to just make a glass slipper. That would have been so much cheaper and it would have been less of a headache because this data extraction took eight weeks. Remember that post where everybody was like, I would pay anything to get my data back. Oh, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay. You have to think of this as the cost of doing business. What is the price to pay when your client gets upset because their footage got corrupted and you never made a backup? Wouldn't it be so much better to say, hey, don't worry about it. Here's my link in sync.com and bam, you've got it immediately. You can download it tonight. Just make the glass slipper, think about backups, just put it as part of your workflow. It's the cost of doing business. And especially for us videographers, we can't be a part of those 50% of people who have lost their data. Just, just don't do it. Like, come on, run a proper business. Make your glass slipper, end of conversation. All right, that's all I got for today. My blood pressure is a little bit up because I just, I just can't emphasize enough how important this is. Just do it, guys, just do it. All right, I'm gonna go relax a little bit. I'm just gonna go film something and you should too. So I'll see you next time, bye.